let's go. It's summer school time. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath boys and girls, and welcome to It's Sabbath School Time. Yes, I am Aunt Simone, and I will be your Sabbath School teacher on the program. And I'm so happy that you're here with us today. Well, I want to also wish you a happy holiday. Yes, and I hope that you are having a wonderful time with family, but you're still socially distancing, wearing your mask, washing those hands yes please don't forget to keep yourself safe and sound all right well we are going to get into our program and we are going to have the welcome and the welcome will be done by alexandria smith who attends the portmore seven day adventist church after which we'll have our opening prayer and the opening prayer will be done by peyton allen Peyton also attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Welcome boys and girls everywhere. Welcome to our Sabbath school. We are happy to have you. Welcome. Welcome. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our family. Please bless this program in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello everyone. Well, welcome back to What's Inside Aunt Simone's Fruit and Veggie Basket. Now last Sabbath I had a trivia for you. Yes, a fruit and veggie trivia. And the question was, is the corn considered a vegetable or a grain? Now, if you said a grain, then you are correct. Yes, it's considered a grain. Some might consider it a vegetable. Now, this week's trivia is, ready? Which of the following is in the top 10 of most economically important global vegetable crops? Which, of the top, which are in the top 10 of the most economically important global vegetable crops? Is it A, the blackberries, B, beets? C, carrots, or D, the broccoli. Hey, I look forward to seeing you next Sabbath, and I can't wait to hear your responses. All right, make it a wonderful Sabbath. Bye. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. Yes, it is time for Sing Along. Yes, so I want you to get your instruments and whatever it is that you have so you can play along or sing along with our participants. Today, yes, we have song number one and song number one will be done by Leah and Layla Brown. They attend two churches, yes, in the Bronx, New York, in the USA. The first church is Tabernacle of Joy, and the second church is New Life. And girls, go ahead, we are listening. Oh, my name is Layla from, and now I'm free. The title of the song is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Oh,
Christmas morn. Go down down the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go down down the mountain. Wonderful, beautiful singing. Thank you so much. All right, now we're going to have song number two. And song number two will be done also by sisters. Yes, it's Abigail Bramwell and Rachel. Yes, they attend the Spanish Town Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, Abigail will be on the piano while Rachel sings. Go ahead, girls. for your beautiful song. Thank you so much. We enjoyed it. All right, now we're going to have Megan Thelwell and Megan attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Go ahead, Megan. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him for He is thy help and salvation. Well, our sing-along is just about done for now. Yes. Well, it's time for us to go into the lesson study part of our program. We're going to have the kindergarten lesson study and the primary. And both will be narrated by Aunt Frenita Buddy Fullwood. Yes, Aunt Frenita. And we look forward to hearing from you, Aunt Frenita. Boys and girls, after that, we will have the junior lesson review. And the junior lesson review will be done by Jonathan Morgan. And Jonathan attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church.
Hello boys and girls, this is Aunt Fernita and I have a wonderful story for you called Birthday Presents for Jesus. Today's memory verse is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, God loves a cheerful giver. The message for today's story is we worship Jesus when we bring our offerings to Him. Have you ever given someone the perfect birthday present? How did you feel when that person opened your gift? On the night that baby Jesus was born, the angels came and sang to the shepherds. The shepherds were the only ones who heard the angels, but they weren't the only ones who saw them. Far, far away in another country, a group of men were looking into the heavens. They had studied the nighttime sky for many years, and they knew where every star was supposed to be. But on that night, something was different. There, right there, was what seemed to be like a new star, a bright star, one that had never been seen there before. These men didn't know it, but they were looking at the angel choir that had sung to the shepherds. After their song, the angels had faded off into the distance until they looked like a new star glittering in the night sky. What did it mean? These men studied the Bible until they found special words. A star shall come forth out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. That was it. This was the star of the new king. They would go and worship him right away. But they couldn't go without presents. They would take the nicest gifts they could find. Gold, the most precious metal. Frankincense, a sweet smelling incense from a faraway country. And myrrh, an expensive perfume. They were treasures fit for any king and they would be the perfect presents. When it was night again, the men checked the heavens once more. Yes, the strange new star was still there and they would follow the star and it would lead them to the new king. When daylight crept into the eastern sky, the angel star faded from sight. Then the wise men stopped to sleep. But as soon as darkness slipped over the land and they could see the star, they were ready to follow its light once more. Night after night they traveled, for it was a long trip. But every night the angel star guided them until at last it led them to baby Jesus. The wise men were so happy to find Mary and baby Jesus. They fell to their knees and worshipped the baby. Then they gave the gold, frankincense, and myrrh to Jesus. Mary and Joseph were amazed, but pleased. These were the first birthday presents for baby Jesus, and they were the perfect gifts of love and worship. This podcast is produced by gracelink.net at Studio El Piso, Singapore. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Gifts for Baby Jesus. The memory verse is from Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. It says, They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Today's message is, is we worship Jesus when we give gifts to Him. Do you like to get presents? I do. A long time ago, some men gave special gifts to Jesus. I see it! I see it! The man looking into the night sky was suddenly very excited. What do you think? He asked the men who were with him. It could be the sign we've been looking for, answered one of his friends. Together, the men talked about the new star they had been studying. These men were magi, men known in their country as honest and wise. Although they were not Jews, 
they had studied the Hebrew scriptures and learned about a special star. That star meant it was time for the Messiah to be born. So when the bright new star appeared in the night sky, they rejoiced. They were sure it was the sign of the Messiah, the Savior. After much discussion, some of these wise men decided to follow the star. Traveling at night to keep the star in sight, the men journeyed for many days. They kept studying the scriptures as they went. And God's Holy Spirit guided them. After many weeks of travel, the star stopped over Jerusalem. The wise men expected to find everyone talking about the birth of their new king. Where is he who was born king of the Jews? They asked. We have seen his star and have come to worship him. But strangely, no one seemed to know anything about it. Before long, King Herod heard about the strangers and their questions. He wanted to know more, so he sent for them. Sir, can you direct us to the Jewish king who has been born? asked one of the men. We have come to worship him. Now Herod knew that he was not well liked by his subjects. The idea of a new king made him angry and jealous, but he pretended to be interested so he could find out more. Before answering the men from the east, Herod questioned the Jewish priests and scribes. They reported that scripture said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Herod then told the wise men, Go to Bethlehem and search for the child. And when you find him, come and tell me. I want to worship him too. Soon the wise men arrived in Bethlehem. There they found the place where the little family was staying, but no royal guard stood nearby. There was nothing at all to show the world that this child was special. They wondered, can this be the Messiah we have looked for? At first, it didn't seem possible. But when the wise men saw the baby, they knew. This Jesus truly was the Savior, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they gave him their costly gifts to Mary and Joseph, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Soon it was time to leave. The Magi planned to go back to Jerusalem to share their good news with Herod. But in a dream, God told them not to go there. Wicked Herod really wanted to harm the baby, not worship him. So they went home another way. We can worship Jesus just as the wise man did. We can give him our time and our talents. We can give gifts of money and other things. But most of all, we can give him our hearts. What will your special gift of worship be for Jesus? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. Audio is post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Hey boys and girls, today I will be reading Lesson 13, The Magi and the Messiah. Politics. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts. Have you, PowerPoint, we worship by giving ourselves to Jesus. Have you ever gone to an unknown place with only a few clues about how to get there? The Magi were in that kind of situation while searching for Jesus. About the only thing they knew was that he was a king. Even though their journey was going to be long, their ultimate goal was to worship him. During the time of 
During the time Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there lived in the East a group of wise, honorable, and educated men who were awaiting the coming of the Messiah. They were not part of the Jewish nation, yet they were seekers after the truth. The, these men of noble character recognize God as the creator of the universe as they contemplate his works in nature. They also studied the Hebrew scriptures and discovered with growing interest that the coming of the Messiah was near. In their sincere desire to know more about more about such a significant event, they were alert to identify of signs of his coming. Around the time the angels announced to the humble shepherds in Bethlehem the news about the birth of Jesus, the men from the east also discovered what seemed to be an unusual star. Not knowing how to account for it, they looked for an explanation in the scriptures, and, they, and their attention was drawn to Balaam's prophecy. A star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. The wise men welcomed the light of God's revelation with open hearts. They were receptive to follow the star and find the Messiah. As the Lord told them in a dream, Soon the small group of wise men set out for the long journey. They traveled by night, following the star. During day, the travelers rested and eagerly studied the prophecies, being reassured of God's leading. Once they arrived in the land of Israel, the star guided the travelers to Jerusalem and stopped over the temple. With growing anticipation, the travelers started to inquire, where is the one who has been born king of Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Matthew 2, chapter 2, verse 2. The wise men surprised their question was treated with indifference. The people seemed ignorant to the glorious event that had taken place in their nation. The news of the wise men visit reached the palace of the king of King Herod and filled him with fear, anger, and jealousy. Jealousy. In haste, the king assembled the chief priests and the scribes to inquire about the prophecies indicating the birthplace of the Messiah. In Bethlehem, in Judea, replied the religious leaders, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. When hearing the words of the prophecy, the king was deeply distressed. He secretly sent the wise men to Bethlehem to look for the newborn king and bring back word about his birthplace. The wise men agreed to this request and left Jerusalem, guided by the star until they reached the town of David. They found Jesus in a humble dwelling, in keeping with their eastern custom. The wise men present Jesus with precious gifts of gold, frankincense, myrrh, and bowing down they worshipped. But while in Bethlehem, the wise men were instructed by an angel not to return to the king, king, not to return to King Herod. So they went home by another way. Similarly, Joseph was told in a dream to flee Egypt with his family because Herod was seeking to murder the child. Without hesitation, Joseph took his family and went to Egypt. The gifts received from the wise men served to supply the family's daily necessities while they lived in Egypt. After an angel told Joseph of the death of King Herod, he and Mary and Jesus journeyed back to Israel and established their home in the town of Nazareth in Galilee. God's word, the Bible, is a, a trusted guide. The Bible, when studied prayerfully, will lead us into a saving relationship with Jesus. Yes, the whole Bible tells of Christ from the first record of the creation, for without him was nothing, was not anything made that was made. To the closing promise, behold, I come quickly. 
we are reading of his words and listening to his voice if you would become if you would become acquainted with the savior study the holy scriptures like the wise men from the time of jesus we too choose to be guided by the light of god's word for the bible will lead us to the savior thank you thank you jonathan for doing the junior lesson review at this time we're going to now hear from Jonathan's sister, yes, her name is Joelle, Joelle Morgan, and Joelle was Joelle will be singing song number four, and she attends the Portmore Seventh Day Adventist Church. Through the eyes of man, it seems there's so much we have lost as we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked. One by one, the enemy has whispered lies and led them off. Slaves, as we call out, dry bones, come alive, come alive. As we call out, dead hearts, come alive, come alive. A battle of the ashes, let us see an army arrive. As we call out, dry bones come alive. But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know that there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. Yeah, yeah. As we call out, dry bones, come alive, come alive. As we call out, dead hearts, come alive, come alive. A battle of the ashes, let us see an army rise. As we call out, dry bones come alive. Now breathe, O breath of God. Breathe, O breath of God. Breathe, O breath of God. Now breathe, breathe, O breath of God. Breathe, O breath of God. Breathe, O breath of God. Now breathe. Breathe, O oh breath of God. Breathe, O oh breath of God. Breathe, O oh breath of God. Now breathe. As we call out, dry bones come alive, come alive. As we call out, dead hearts come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. As we call out, dry bones, come alive, come alive, come alive. Yes. You know, Aunt Simone doesn't like the program to end, but we have to end the program today, just for today. We'll be back next Sabbath, so make sure that you come back next Sabbath. Well, at this time, we're now going to have the closing prayer, and after that, we'll have the goodbye. The closing prayer will be done by Madison Davis, and Madison attends the Metropolitan Seventh-day Adventist Church, yes, in the USA. And after that, we will have the goodbye by Jaden Francis. Jaden attends the Guava Gap Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you for worshiping with us today. It is now time for the closing prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you that we had a good day. And for those of us who didn't have a good day, let tomorrow be better. And thank you for all the prayers and the ones that weren't spoken, but you still heard them. And please be with everyone tonight as they rest and close their eyes and just relax. And please be with all our families and friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody, bye! Well, boys and girls, it's closing time. Yes, I know. But guess what? It's time to say thank you to all the participants and to the parents. Yes. Well, we are going to pause 
for a second in our program to give God thank you. And now we're going to see all who participated in the program. First, we have Alexandria, she did the welcome. Then we had Peyton, who did the opening prayer. Next, we had Leah and Layla, who did song number one. Then we had Abigail on the piano while Rachel did song number two. And then we had Megan, Megan did song number three. And Jonathan did our junior lesson review while his sister Joelle sang song number four. After that, we had Madison, who did the closing prayer, and last but not least, we had Jaden, who did our goodbyes. All right, well, I will see you on next Sabbath. Don't forget, you can come back later and watch the program on YouTube. Yes, you can visit the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist YouTube channel to view the video a little later. All right, well, have a wonderful Sabbath, and have a great week. Goodbye.